Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about a helicoil. I was already starting to do this helicoil and I just thought, wait, hold on. You may want to know how to do a helicoil. You may not know what a helicoil is. This is a helicoil brand. There's several different brands. It's been sold several different times. And at different places like Granger or AutoZone or stuff, I have seen it in different names. It's the same brand inside. I think at one time it belonged to Ace or there's different companies. Um, here's even a different company that owns this, which is Black & Decker, owns Helicol now. All that doesn't matter. If it's a Helicol, this is what they're talking about. Let me zoom in here and see if we can't talk about this bad dude. It's like a spring. It's like a slinky. Can you see that? So it's like a spring. It's like a slinky kind of, and it's a coil. It's a Helicol. It's a stainless coil. Here we have strip hole it's loose so this coil is actually the threads and you're thinking well how is that going to hold anything well there's everything's going to come in the kit and it's going to give you the tap the special tap the heli coils and the installer we're going to just show you how to do it so you can figure it out so let's just go and show you if you have the kit you're gonna buy the kit that's necessary. In this particular size for this Ford 351 Windsor, it's a half inch bolt by 13. And that's the thread pitch. This isn't about how to determine your thread pitch and so on and so forth. If you need a video like that, hit the like and subscribe, leave me a comment. This is a simple video on how to properly install a, a helicone. What I'm gonna give you is the tips that um, are gonna bite you in the butt. You can read the instructions in the back. Yes, everybody can read the instructions in the back. I'm gonna give you the tips that are not art I'm gonna give you the tips that aren't in the back of the package. The first thing we want to do is going to cover the area up, tape everything up because you will be using air to blow out those threads and you don't want to get metal in there. That's just a tip, but it's a very good tip. Use a lot, use a lot of tape. The next thing is after you find the right helical, very important part is to use the proper drill and what I like about the Helicol brand kit right here, half inch. I don't know if I could zoom in for a little bit on there. So we have here, there we go. This is a half by 13. There's the kit size. There's the insert part number. So when you're done with these inserts, you buy another pack of eight. That's very good because um, you want to keep this. I believe there's even in here. Look at that. It's some instructions. You're going to drill. You're going to tap. You're going to install the helicoil, and then you're going to pull the tool out. This is all great. So awesome. I love that because it does give you the instructions. Y'all can go through the instructions. Maybe I should do something like that, and then I'll screenshot it, and I'll put it in the back or something. There we go. Okay. Another important tip is it's going to give you the drill size. That's one of the most important tips that I can give you right off the bat is to use the proper drill. This is a 17 30 seconds drill. It's even telling you it's a 531 thousandths if you want to use a mic. The reason you want to use the right drill, if the hole is too big, stop it. We don't want a hole that's too big. You know what's going to happen. Yes, it's going to just strip out. And you're going to blame the helicoil, and it's not the helicoil's palm. It's helicoils can be used on cylinder heads. It can be used on main bolts over 100 pounds. That's not a problem. The helicoil can do it. Let's go ahead and get back down to theirs. So it can work for head bolts. Um, if you're using a stud like a flathead Ford, um, that's when you start having issues. The only issues are water will go around the threads. So you have to really seal them really good. Since it is a coil, it's really hard to make a water seal, but that doesn't mean it can't be used. We use them on flathead Fords all the time. All that being said, let's get to it. We're gonna install this insert in here this Healy coil in here and I'm gonna just show you how to do it and give you some tips tip number one remember use the proper drill bit buy the proper drill bit you want a nice tight hole and it's gonna work fine um, don't need to go there again on that part the next thing is we're gonna tap it it comes with a special tap don't throw these taps in your toolbox don't go grab oh I saw him do it and I have a tap like that at home. No, no. These aren't regular taps. It's a tap in the sense of it's a tap, yes. And if you don't know what a tap or a die is, 
that could be another video. But it's a special tap just for that insert. So it's not just a tap out of your tap and die set. It's not the, like the next oversize and then you put a helical. It, that's not what it is. So when I get started, first of all, I don't want to miss a point because I already did get started, is I have some some... I have some fancy tools that I've made. This is an oil pump off a dry stage uh, uh, race motor, but that doesn't matter what it is. But take you anything. It could be a piece of wood. If you know somebody with a drill press, if you have a drill press, put it on a drill press and drill a bunch of different holes in it, and you have your tool already. Um, remember, use tools, don't be a tool. So um, what do you what are you think? What, what am I talking about? Look, here's another piece that I have, a piece of aluminum that is drilled, and now... I don't have to worry about, am I going crooked? Am I going left? Am I going right? Am, you know, to, not to worry. Hold this down on the block, sit up there on top. We're gonna drill right down through it all the way to the bottom. How could you be crooked? How could you be crooked with that? And it is, this is just a piece of aluminum. I had it laying around. Like I said, here's one. I've already taken and drilled the hole for a 3 8 bolt hole drill. I've already even drilled it, or there it is, for a helicoil. So I can even run my tap through here to start my tap. I have some of these that are 8 millimeter, 5 16 It's just scrap pieces of aluminum that I can lay on top of the block and drill right through. Like I say, if you don't have a, a drill press, not a problem. One of your buddies does, somebody has one, go to Harbor Freight and look around. If there's nobody there, use their drill press. And once you drill a straight hole, you're done. You don't need that drill press anymore. Not that a drill press ain't a bad thing to have. So let's get back to this. Now, if you've seen my tool that I've used, then that's what I did use to go ahead and drill my hole. Now the hole's drilled. It was pretty easy because the threads were all gone. So the threads were all gone. It wasn't much of a uh, difficulty to drill. So I didn't have to show you how to drill a hole. This isn't a how to drill a hole video. Or is it? Okay, now we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tap. If I had a half inch tool already made and I even thought about starting a piece of aluminum drilling it for a half inch, not to worry. I have these machinist blocks. You can use one of these, but you can use anything that's square and flat. You could use this. You could use this. You could use anything that's square and flat. What am I doing? Is I'm laying it on the side of my tap, looking at it. That way I can make sure that I'm not going crooked. That way or this way or this way or that way. So I'm using the block to align my tap so I don't have an angle. Just another trick, and I think that this trick would be really useful. There I am going crooked, but if I have my block, there I am going straight. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in here and see if you can get a better angle of what I'm doing. All right, there's my tap, and this is what I'm talking about, about being able to actually get it on there let's get it on see so you can actually see where you're at and i can lean the tap and look at there i'm already i got the little tap up there i can lean it there we go and then turn it a little on the hard side with one hand but it's okay you know what i'm talking about now and i'm going to do it this way as well and that's going to assure me that my hole is tapped nice and straight here we go mm -hmm. i like it i like it and we want to go a turn and then we want to back off Sometimes a half a turn is enough. Got to be real careful. If you have cutting oil, that actually works better than WD-40, but we like to use WD-40 in just about everything.
Remember the rule? Always go back and forth. There's a reason for that. One of these days, no matter how good you are, you will break a tap. And if you always remember to back off and turn it a few times, the day that it happens, and it will happen to the best of us, it's not jammed in there because you were just kept on going in tighter and tighter and tighter and it broke off. It's going to be a booger to get out. So if you can make sure that you back off a few times and it's loose, if it does break, you'll be able to reach in there with two nails, a pair of dikes, anything, get in there and remove it, weld it. And remember, if you break a tap, it doesn't mean... Anything, unless you keep breaking them. It's, all, it's going to happen to all of us. Take your time. Don't be filming while you're putting a tap in. And that way you can be at the right angle. And not me. Right now I'm backwards, but hey. Look at there. Okay. I'm going to ask you to hold your ears and put your eye protection on, please. Y'all ready? All right. All right. I'm trying to concentrate. I think we've gone all the way down. We'll clean it up and then go on to the next part. All right. Just watch your eyes and your ears. I've already blown the hole out past that we're going to get into the install tool and the install tool looks like a bolt and it has a little finger right there at the end a little finger to catch the helicoil here's the helicoil it's going to go in real loose until it catches that little spot see right there and it's actually quite loose that's okay because what now it's going to happen is that i'm going to change position and get around this side okay so we have our helical like i said it's loose because it's going to compress as you're putting it in and check this out it's pretty much i got my eyes closed right now if you could see it you could do it in your eyes closed um i got my hand behind my back and i'm putting it in backwards and I'm going to give you another tip, blind and backwards. See how we're flush now? Don't do that. That's a common amateur mistake, and we don't want you to be amateurs out there. We want you to be professionals. All you got to do is do one and charge somebody, and you'd be a professional. All right, so what we're going to do is take it down at least a half of a turn. I like to do one, one, one ring down off the deck. And you're wondering, why is that? And... If you've ever seen any helicoils done wrong and they're sticking out above the deck, they went in flush and as you started to put a bolt in and tighten it, it pulls it out. You don't want it to pull out. So if you'll go in one whole turn in, it's now under the deck. It's under one of the threads. So it's not going to pull out at all. Look at that. And you're done. What do we have left to do is we have to take a little punch or a little screwdriver and down on the inside you'll have a little tip. 
let me show you what I'm talking about there we go focus okay let me see if I can get a screwdriver and show you how we're going to remove that little tip wait there it is that was the tool that little bit was what was what this grabbed see right there that grabbed it as it went in all the way in there sometimes you can leave them in there if it's all the way down not a problem you don't have to worry about taking it off uh, sometimes you can go like this and just use this same tool and knock it down i like to just take a little pick let me go grab one all right i'm back all right it took so long so we're gonna go in there with a pair of needle nose screwdriver will work also pick works and I like to just pick it backwards and I'm doing it with the camera in front of me see how it's already going sideways a little bit and that's okay I need to back the camera off a little bit just so that I have room to work and you can still see what I'm doing but um here we go I just popped it off and if you can see it now there it is it's gone it's inside let's go ahead and blow it out of there see that and it didn't go in the motor all right so we're done that's the proper way to do a helicoil nothing else to do besides put the bolt in all right so we're done that's the proper way to do a helicoil all that's left is to put the bolt in look at that done and you're done and you're done let me back off see if i can't get this all right so that's the proper way to do a helicoil it's really quite simple look at the thread just man it just spins perfectly it's a stainless insert this works in aluminum this works in cast iron this works in wood this works in plastic this will work in every, anything and everything um you don't have to worry about it it will hold 100 pounds of torque it'll hold over 100 pounds of torque the reason this was stripped because this customer over torqued his head bolts that's not why we're here actually that is why we're here but anyway we're done so there we are we're finished we're done simple quick helicoil what is a helicoil? Now you know what a helicoil is. It's literally a coil that's put in. I've shown you how to put it in. They're real simple. I've given you the tips that I think are, are going to be what's going to save you. It needs to go in straight and it needs to be the right drill bit. All right. I think we're done in this quick little video. All right. I'll see you on the next one.